Hello, everyone. My name is Fran Fortino, and I live in Waitley, and I'm the president of the Valley Neighbors, a local group of volunteers organizing to help elders and, our, and their families stay connected in their homes while aging in place. We work with our partners, including those on the webinar today in the three neighboring towns of Deerfield, Sunderland, and Waitley. Uh, our plan is to provide rides to appointments and shopping, friendly phone check-ins, technology assistance, and more. Uh, this work and this webinar are partially funded by um, grants from the uh, Cooley Dickinson uh, com Healthy Communities and from the state's um, Healthy Aging Fund. Um, stay tuned in 2021 from more on Valley Neighbors. But it's my pleasure today to introduce um, our panel who together have decades of experience in assisting elderly residents and families. They will discuss the effects of isolation and loneliness in the elderly, especially now during COVID and provide resources for you and your families to deal with these often debilitating issues. We'll have time at the end for question and answer if, if there are any questions or in during the webinar with the chat feature. So uh, I'd like to introduce first uh, Christina Johnson, who is the director of the South County Senior Center, which serves the residents of Deerfield, Sunderland and Waitley. She has over 10 years of experience working with the elder population. Christina grew up and currently resides in Northampton. Um, next, uh, Gail Mason, who is a retired nurse practitioner who lives in Waitley. She's on the Sunderland Council on Aging and is a board member of Valley Neighbors. Sue Pratt, who many of you know, uh, in 1999 established the Collective Home Care Agency. She also created a nonprofit, the nonprofit Care Collaborative in 2001 to serve elders and caregivers. She partnered with G Greenfield Community College for 15 years to provide CNA and um, uh, home health aid training and served on the executive board of the Home Care Aid Council. In 2018, she opened Giving Circle Thrift Store right in the heart of South Deerfield. Um, and next is Linda Puzan, who is the Clinical Services Supervisor at LifePath in Greenfield. Uh, LifePath is the uh, local area agency on aging for Franklin County, which provides a range of services to support independent living. Linda provides outreach services to elders through LifePath's Elder Mental Health Outreach Program, Linda also provides dementia coaching to caregivers and facilitates a virtual dementia caregiver support group. Uh, and the last but not least is Nancy Maynard, who is a <laughs> former uh, assistant director of Highland Valley Elder Services, is now um, a Valley Neighbors board member. So uh, without further ado, I'd like to uh, get us going with a question. Um, or a statement, um, many of you in the audience and, and others have experienced isolation and loneliness, particularly in this COVID time period. And we're gonna start uh, the panel discussion with um, a little explanation on uh, what is loneliness and um, what um, isolation means in this context. So I, Linda's going to start us off. Linda? Okay. Um, oh, I just want to say one other thing about Life Path, too. Uh, sure. Not only do we serve Franklin County, but we have programs that do go outside of our county, too. So um, in Hampshire and Hamden County, we have our um, TCA program. But if people go on our website, they could see the things that we offer and where. Okay. Okay, so I thought I would start off reading a little scenario. We're gonna talk about loneliness, social isolation, depression. So as I read this story, um, I have questions at the end that you can ponder and think about, and then I will give a little definition um, of what loneliness and social isolation is. 
And you could think about this um, woman named Mary uh, that I wrote about and where she might fall in this. So Mary is 81 years old and she lives alone in a home uh, that she owns. It is a three bedroom house and she closes off these rooms other than her own bedroom. She is a widow and has two children. One lives about a half hour away and her other child lives in the Midwest. She has some health issues impacting her ability to do some things in the house. Laundry is difficult because she can't do the stairs to get to the basement. She uses a walker and has failing eyesight. So she doesn't like to drive much and only does so when necessary. She has some hearing loss as well. She does have a homemaker who comes once a week and helps with laundry and grocery shopping. Mary spends most of her time alone. Before COVID, she did attend church and a friend picked her up and drove her there. A few times a month, she would go to the local senior center when they had programs she liked, especially playing cribbage. She watches TV most of the, of the time right now. She also enjoys baking and reading the daily paper. When family calls, they ask her how she's doing and she says, oh, I'm fine and not, and not to worry about me. Other than the homemaker, Mary has not seen other people because of COVID. When she does talk with others, people have noticed she is less talkative than she used to be. So the question is, do you think Mary is lonely and, and why? Um, do you think she's socially isolated and why? Is it possible that she's depressed? And what are things that you would suggest to enhance her quality of life? So people might think about, people interchange, I should say, that the term social isolation and loneliness, and they're not necessarily the same. So when we think of loneliness, people could be lonely and be in a big crowd of people. Um, and um, social isolation is more what I think a lot when we think of COVID people are dealing with, that they can't be around people that they've enjoyed in the past being around, um, such as going to the senior center that Christina, you know, with all her programs there. Um, so when we also think of loneliness, it's more sub that's more of a subjective term than being socially isolated. We could be more objective about that. Uh, because the difference being that loneliness is a feeling that you might have. Um, not necessarily the same as solitude, because many people could be experiencing solitude and actually like it and like to be alone. Um, but it's the loneliness piece and the, and the concern I think we have as we're dealing with COVID is that the way that social isolation and loneliness um, they interconnect. So a lot of people who are very socially active and are socially isolated now might start getting very lonely. Um, and, you know, and I think people, you know, I hear this from the work that I do of people struggling. And now that we're in the ninth month, 10th month of, of the uh, COVID, people are saying, I, 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 you know, I don't know when this is going to end. There's a sense of um, like what, what's happening. I don't see an end to this. Even though people are reading in the paper, there might be a vaccine soon. Um, that they've been because I've noticed, and I don't know if someone in our panel could mention this too. I notice people are saying different things now about the virus in in the beginning when it first started, March, April, May, June. Um, because I think people thought, well, maybe this will last a few months and then we'll go back to normal. And then we started having a second wave of COVID. And then we're hearing states that are closing down. And then that's where I'm hearing people saying, I'm having a really hard time now. I'm hearing people talk about crying more. Um, I'm hearing people saying, I'm tired of Zoom. You know, I had enough of this. I want to see real people. I want to hug my grandchildren. Um, I want to talk to my friend. I want to go for a walk with my friend. And yes, many of us can go walk with our friend. But if we have some of our population can't get out as easily. So that's not, you know, they need somebody to help them down the stairs. 
they'll need somebody to be right next to them and walk with them. So being closer could be more of a challenge. And clearly if they have other health issues going on, like respiratory problems, then we want them to be careful. So the, and another worry I think we have between the social isolation and loneliness is that people start to experience depression, more anxiety. Um, I'm hearing people saying they're having a hard time sleeping. We're noticing an impact that we really, you know, we worry about our clients, our elders, particularly who live alone, even before COVID, who might be socially isolated and lonely. But now it's impacting so many more people. And so it's almost as, you know, it, uh, there's a, what I would call a mental health crisis. And it's a crisis because, not because people are experiencing this, because that's natural. Of course, we're gonna experience sadness, depression, anxiety. But what we're concerned about is how can people get some help? And we'll talk about that at the end of this talk. What, what can we do for um, our clients, our elders in our communities and help them through this while, you know, while they're dealing with this and we're all kind of struggling and trying to figure out what we can do to be supportive. Um, the other concern is, is that, you know, this can have long-term effects on people's health. You know, chronic illness can get worse. We're concerned about substance abuse, about that increasing, um, about people lacking motivation. Um, and I'll give you an example. People, you know, it's like, oh, I've always been interested in doing things and I, I'm just not interested. I'm not interested in knitting anymore. I just don't want to do it. It's just, this is all too crazy. I myself, every year, I put up a Christmas tree and this year I, I'm not going to do it. I just don't feel like it. I don't, I'm not in the spirit of it. And I think it's because of COVID. So that's kind of an example. So when I talk to clients, I, I ask them, well, let, let's talk about what we're doing for self-care. What are you doing to take care of yourself? Let's talk. And I do talk about things. What are things that you have done in your past? I try to see what people's resiliency is, what's their coping strategies, um, and what are some ideas that we can try to probe and figure out to, to help folks through this. So I will pass this on, I think, to Christina. <laughs> uh Go ahead, Christina. Okay. Um, well, as the as the director of the senior center in town, um, I I still interact with quite a few of the, you know, quite a few of the seniors out there. Um, we have in person. Um, we have a drive through um, lunch program. So I, you know, briefly while they're in their car and I'm handing them lunch. <laughs> I speak to them. And then of course, lots and lots of checkup calls and cards and emails are exchanged. So um, I can attest that um, I, I've definitely noticed, you know, a, a difference. Um, people often mention to me that they're, they're, they're lone, they use the word lonely. Um, they use the word isolated. Um, they want to be with their friends. They want to go to programs in person. Um, you know, they want to be able to hug their grandchildren. Um, and, and one of the most, um, I think, poignant things someone, one of the seniors has said to me is that at her, and she was saying at her age, and, and she was in her 80s, is I should say in her 80s, um, at her age, losing an entire year like this is a much bigger deal than say if you were eight, 18. That was, you know, summing up how she felt that, that, you know, she didn't have a lot of maybe active years left. And so losing one is, is a huge deal to her. Um, so um, yeah, that's, that's what I, you know, I've been seeing a lot of that. And obviously I try to do my part to at least help with the loneliness, but um you know, and, and as, um, um, sorry, Linda, Linda said um, that, you know, it seems to be getting in some ways worse because it's just, 
dragged on for so long now <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and people are like you know I, I was I was dealing with it for a while but now I'm, ju I'm just sick of this I just want to go to a <laughs> you know play cards with my my group of friends so mm. yes um so you work with elderly too and you see a lot of what's going on did you want to add anything in um to this uh, I'll unmute you. Yep. Okay. So, um, sure, I could say, I think one of the um, issues right now is that winter's coming. And um, so winter is always a time, I think, when people are a little more isolated. But, uh, you know, maybe they've been, uh, we all have been pretty good sports about this through the summer. It wasn't as bad. But now winter is coming. So that adds to it. And I think uh, what I see here at the shop, um, so we are still open just a few days a week. People love to come in and just putter around. We limit it to six people in the shop at a time. But what I notice is that I hear a lot of sighing. And this is just something that I'm aware of. I really, uh, people, people um, tear up when we ask how they are. Um, and, I think that we're all experiencing this. It's not different for someone who's older. What's different is that the, the older person may, may not on their own be able to um, establish any kind of social connection or maybe they can't do Zoom. So I, I am seeing uh, more uh, kind of depressive behavior, more sadness, uh, and also this idea of traditions, Thanksgiving and Christmas, and not being able to follow up what Christina said about um, losing a year. I think losing a holiday when you're 89 years old is very different than 30 years old. Uh, not being able to shop, not being able to see your grandchildren uh, for this holiday. It's, it's very different uh, than it would be if you were younger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, thank you for um, sharing that with the, our audience. And uh, I thought we'd move on a little bit to um, uh, what Christina might have to say about uh, the risks that our elderly are um, encountering now with this uh, isolation and loneliness during COVID. Right. So, you know, the stress, the loneliness, the isolation obviously affects all age groups, affects, you know, most people right now. But um, the elderly are, are um, taking older individuals are, you know, at more at risk um, and they're at greater risk for a few reasons. Um, many of them have already experienced um significant losses in their lives um like a you know a spouse or um maybe even a child and, and i and i've heard that from people that they're actually this time period where there's a lot of alone time and time to think um multiple people multiple people have said it's like they're experiencing the loss of their husband a, a second time um, so they're, they're already maybe coming in, you know, in with this, with, you know, loneliness and loss to begin with. Um, let me see, I wrote down a few, th um, they're also less likely to be living with other people. So, um, a lot of people live alone or if they're, e if they're living in, um, even, you know, nursing care facilities or uh, assisted living, um, they're not really in, get, you know, on purpose, the, 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 these, these homes are not having the people interact as much. And it's not the same as, you know, when you used to go to dinner with um, everyone else from the community place that you live, you know, there's probably for obviously the COVID reason, um, there's less of the, that. Um, so they're sort of alone in their room most of the day. Um, they, they often, um, lack, you know, social support. Um, a, a, a lot of, um, research I've read says that a lot of older people will say they feel like they have a lot of 
casual friends and acquaintances, but not really close friends, like friends that when they're feeling really down, they could, you know, at least pick up the phone and, and talk to them. Um, I know how I have people that will say, mm -hmm. oh, well, I, I don't want to bother my daughter. You know, she has, she's dealing with her kids mm -hmm. or I don't want to bother so-and-so or, um, so even if they do have some of those relationships, there's also a hesitancy to quote unquote bother them or be a burden. Um, also, you know, a lot of older people, their ki kids, their if they have kids or uh, grandkids, there they could be all over the country. Um, and obviously, um, these days we're still <laughs> these days. It might not really make a difference because even if they're next door, you know, there has to be social isolation. But it does mm -hmm. make a difference when you don't have a local support system. Mm -hmm. um, there, there's also, you know with older, the older people issues with, um, you know, falling risk or vision or hearing or, you know, um, cognitive decline. Um, and, I'm, and again, I'm certainly not saying everyone has these things, but these are impediments to, um, you know, more so in summer, because um, as, as Sue mentioned, we're going into winter, but those are impediments to doing some of the activities where you could get out, you know, um, and, and at least take walks or, you know, you know, um, talk from a distance with your neighbors. Mm -hmm. um, and then also in rural communities, like, um, as, as Fran mentioned, the senior center, I'm the director of is Deerfield, Waitley and Sunderland's we service. And so they're, they're all, you know, rural communities and, and transportation is a constant issue, um, mm -hmm. which also limits maybe the few, maybe social opportunities that exist right now, which again are few and far between, but um, it just, again, explains why there's, you know, even this, this issue affects um, older people um, particularly hard. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and I think I mentioned when I was first speaking, you know, this thing about losing time and not being able to hug their grandchildren and, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, with the holidays are, are uh, especially hard. Um, and, you know, there, there's a lot to say. Um, I mean, I definitely feel the loss of losing that physical contact with people. Um, you know, there's seniors that would come to the center, a lot of them that I would always, you know, give a hug to. And, and you know, I haven't been able to hug any of those people for 10 months. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, so it affects me. So, it, mm -hmm. you know, so those are some of the different reasons that, um, you know, we put together this program because yes, the older community often has even an additional um, you know, factors involved in the isolation and loneliness that may affect all of us. Thank you, thank you. We, uh, um, you know, we appreciate all the things you're able to do still in the, <laughs> even with the senior center closed at the moment, the building anyway. Yeah. Um, and uh, it, everything you said is, is absolutely, um, true, and I feel it too. Is uh, even uh, with Valley Neighbors as a volunteer, that we just can't do um, the physical contact and things that we had hoped to do. And I'm sure that's true for everybody in this panel. Um, I'd like to welcome Liz, who just joined us. Hi, <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> We're, it's okay. Um, we're just going through this sort of webinar pieces, and um, the next one we're talking a little bit more in depth about. Um, the uh, health effects. You know, Christina touched upon it, but Gal, who is a nurse practitioner, um, is going to elaborate a little bit more of some things to look out for and notice um, in terms of health, adverse health in that case. Mm -hmm. Gal? Yeah. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Gail. I'm a nurse practitioner. I am retired. I do live in Sunderland. Um, and I'm gonna talk about the health effects of isolation and chronic loneliness. Um, Christina mentioned that elders are more at risk for experiencing that, and we know that. We also know 
that the majority of us over the age of 65 have two or more chronic conditions that can be affected by chronic isolation and loneliness. Um, and it sort of works both ways. Um, a condition like heart disease or, or heart disease or heart attack or stroke uh, can cause you to become more socially isolated because you can't get out and about the way you used to. Well, at the same time, being more socially isolated can make those conditions worse. And the health effects that we're gonna talk about are not inconsequential. Um, there's been substantial evidence that social isolation and loneliness carry as much risk for our health as does cigarette smoking, sedentary lifestyle, obesity. Um, so in my, in my head, um, my question became, how does that happen? How, how, how is it that isolation and loneliness can cause such significant health effects? And they've done a lot of research over the past five to 10 years. And that research has shown that um, isolation and loneliness can have negative effects on our regulatory systems. Those uh, neural, hormonal, metabolic systems that keep our bodies in balance and when we lose that balance, when one of those systems malfunctions or dysfunctions, um, then we start seeing changes. And these can be cardiovascular changes. Um, we can see increases in blood pressure, in resting heart rate, in vascular resistance. We can see adverse changes to our lipid profiles. All of that, as you know, can lead to worsening of existing heart conditions, worsening of existing hypertension, but it can also lead to new heart disease, new hypertension and stroke. Um, we also can see uh, metabolic changes like worsening of diabetic control in those with, with existing diabetes, and we can see the development of diabetes anew in some individuals. Changes in cognition, those things that many of us as we age worry about, uh, memory loss, uh, word finding, our processing skills, how fast, how clear we can be. Um, studies have shown that accelerated cognitive decline and dementia uh, are associated with low frequency of contact with friends, with family, with community groups. And social interactions are thought to enhance our cognition by activating and maintaining those neural networks in our brain that keep us um, mindful and active. Studies have also seen an association between chronic loneliness and functional decline. So alterations, changes in, your, in our mobility, our ability to get around, move around as freely as we used to. Uh, changes in motor strength, we see weakness in upper and lower extremities. And all of that, of course, impacts our, our abilities to do our activities of daily living, to do the things that we need to do and we want to do to stay independent. Um, and of course, we can see psychological changes. We see, um, as Linda had mentioned, uh, elders are many elders already have some issues with anxiety and depression. And um, we know that uh, depression and anxiety can increase as social connectedness decreases. So that's very briefly the bad news. The good news is that there are things that we can do about this. There are things that we can do to help ourselves and to help each other. And much of the rest of this program is going to be devoted to just that. Um, but I wanna leave you with two thoughts. If you're having any of these feelings of isolation and loneliness, I want you to know that you are not alone, that there are many, many others right here in the communities we live in that are experiencing the same things. And I would secondly encourage you, strongly encourage you to take uh, that first step, even if it mo means moving out of your comfort zone to take that first step <clears throat> to reach out to others, to take advantage of the resources we have in this community. We have many, many people who are here to help us. And these times are hard for everyone. And these people are right there waiting to give us assistance. So I'll turn it over to the community specialist. <laughs> thank, thank you, Gail, very much. Um, 
So we, uh, we wanted to go to, uh, to Sue again because Sue has uh, worked in the community and has seen uh, some of the impacts firsthand as we all have, but she also has um, a way of responding and uh, her efforts are um, an example for how people may find some uh, respite and some assistance with uh, the mental and uh, the physical aspects of isolation. Um, I, I hope we can get Sue back on, <laughs> but if not, um, <laughs> if not, we can just continue. But we do plan, as Gail mentioned, to have um, a long list of resources that we uh, and sh will share with everyone with contact, telephone numbers, et cetera. So there, is, there are uh, many resources in the community um, uh, which are represented here on our panel and that you all at home could turn to to um, uh, get some help if, if needed. Sue, would you like to come back on and um, see, explain how you're really um, addressing some of the aspects in your community of uh, this illness and the, the adverse health effects? Uh, I don't know, of isolation, can you hear me? Yes. Sue? Hmm. Don't know. <laughs> uh, Sue, can you hear us? I think they're lost connection. Yeah, it, it seems their screen's frozen. Yeah. Anyway, um, well, in the meantime, we might as well go right straight to the... Uh, yes. This section, uh, Liz, do you have any questions? Well, you've just jumped on, but uh, are you uh, full of questions or interested in asking anything? Because we, we did ask a few questions early on of the audience. Um, since this is being taped, we hope that I'll, I'll also provoke some uh, response then when it's shown on the cable. But do you have anything um, that you'd like to ask? Sue, uh, Liz? No, she's muted too, okay. Okay, so I think we could move on then to the, the resources we have in our community. And uh, we've all sort of heard about ways you can identify isolation and loneliness. Um, Nancy and Sue, are you back with us? I am back, sorry about that. Okay. Would you like to uh, tell us about ways you're addressing some of the concerns that have been raised about the uh, adverse health effects of isolation and loneliness? I missed a piece of what you were saying, but I'm just going to jump in. Mm. We lost you again. Sorry. <laughs> okay. You have the audio is not good. Not working. Okay. Well, well, let's continue then with the the one of the survey questions we were we'd hope people get a chance to think about, which is, um, are there other tips and ways of coping with um, isolation and loneliness, particularly now? And uh, we also would like to follow up with the. Uh, resources that we've put together and the contact telephone numbers. And I'll share a, um, a, the screen in a minute where people can actually call if they need help and, or would like a little bit of help with their family and friends who may be experiencing the, this kind of isolation and loneliness. So- um, And Fran, um, I just wanted to mention that I had a, I had a brief um, thing about how other p community members or family members could identify loneliness and isolation in the community yes, as well. Ahead. Yeah, why don't we do that as a, a lead into it? That's sort of our last section anyway. Okay. Um, well, like I just said, <laughs> Go ahead. Um, yeah, especially um, even though obviously our, our holiday get togethers are much uh well, hopefully much different for most people this year. Um, so there might, but um, this time is historically 
the time that, well, places like Life Path start getting a lot of calls for home, uh, home, you know, health assistance for their mom or grandma or whatever, because it might be the first time you've really interacted or seen your family member in quite a while. Um, so just some, just some sort of tips. And of course, these can apply to yourself as well, but that, um, that you can look out for, um, for your loved ones, etc. cetera. Um, um, so some of the signs and symptoms are if the deep boredom, general lack of interest, um, you know, losing, losing interest, even in, the, you know, things that, that they used to, you know, love to do or drew pleasure from, um, you know, poor eating and nutrition. Um, these are also obviously signs of depression um, as well. Um, but in particular, I'm using this in regards to isolation and loneliness. Um, if you if you have a chance to visit their home, you know, su significant maybe clutter or hoarding or disrepair, um, you know, maybe an inability of the the person to connect with you on, you know, a deeper level. Um, someone had mentioned earlier, and, you know, I think it was in the, in the case study that Linda mentioned, you know, you, the per daughter asked, oh, how are you, how are you doing? Oh, you know, fine. You know, but they don't <laughs> go into, there's no real deep converse, you know, any kind of deep conversation. Um, and I also mentioned earlier, you know, a lack of having those particular connections, like close, best, quote unquote, best friends that, that you can go to, um, you know, is, is also a sign if you kind of just have acquaintances, um, you know, which are, are good to have too, but um, <laughs> that, that is a sign that, you know, you're lacking that, that, that connection um, with somebody. Um, and, uh, it, it, and then, something that you you personally might pick up on is if you're if you have this overwhelming feeling of loneliness and isolation even if you're 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 in a crowd although you're not so and when I say crowd these days of course it would be more like a, a zoom maybe a zoom get together or uh, hopefully mm. not an actual crowd <laughs> um, but that feeling that you still just feel you know isolated no matter who's around you um, and, and of course, picking up on feelings that they're, they're talking a lot more negatively or self doubt. Um, and, you know, it, when you try to reach out again, I, I sort of mentioned this, but when you try to reach out, there's no kind of reciprocation. So, so those are kind of, you know, signs to look out for that, that you're, you know, your friend, your loved one might be feeling some of this and, you know, that's when you might want to go, you know, look into resources um, to help. Um, mm. So I just wanted to, uh, um, I can also, there was also five tips for coping with coronavirus mm. that is actually mm -hmm. in our outline that I'll just briefly mention. Um, I can actually show that. Okay. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. So you're going to put it on the screen? Okay. Yeah. Ah, there you go. <laughs> so um, obviously you can, you know, you can read that, but, you know, obviously, first of all, following the CDC guidelines. Um, um, so obviously, you know, not having those big, unfortunately, not having those big holiday get togethers that maybe you're used to having, um, wearing a mask, et cetera, um, to creating distractions, um, it, it the, re, still having a routine is particularly important that so each day that you still gain you know gleam some meaningfulness of the day because you know that that's another thing that often is lacking these days like oh it's just a, you know another day but really having you know a routine and um you know keeping up on on some hobbies, keeping up on the cleaning and the laundry, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, 
back to basics is number three. And, and that's, and that's just good health for any situation, following a healthy diet, getting plenty of sleep, exercising regularly, um, which we've talked about how it does get harder now that we're going, you know, getting into the colder weather. So you might have to be more creative about, you know, how you're exercising, um, you know, monitoring your stress, um, are, are you, do you feel like, you know, I really have trouble sleeping now, or I wake up all night, um, I'm drinking more, or I'm feeling angry <laughs> more, and, 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 um, and, and I can also, that's another symptom I can attest to that I've <laughs> seen and interact, well, not angry per se, but just frustration, and, and there seems to be a lot more frustration with the, when I, with the same people I've been seeing, you know, for meals and stuff this whole time. Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. it's just, it's just gone on too long, obviously. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and number mm -hmm. five, um, ask for help. And, you know, and that's, and that's what I was saying about looking out for, um, these signs, um, of your loved ones or your friends, um, but also yourself. And if you're thinking while hearing all of us talk that, Hey, I feel a lot of those things and a lot of those things apply to me, then, you know, get help. Don't, there's no reason to have to feel that way and live that way. Um, mm -hmm. Even if it's just giving, you know, a family member or an old friend a call. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I feel the, some of those sentiments <laughs> as well. And nothing helps more than a nice phone call with a friend, a good friend, even acquaintance, you know. Right. It's, it's very true, those words. Um, well, uh, we're sort of coming um, back full circle a little bit. Uh, I know we uh, haven't gotten to everything we planned, but we're the, the most important part I think is being able to, sh is, is coming next is what can we uh, uh, do to get some help? And um, we have put together a set of resources that all of us on the panel can actually provide. And um, we have here uh, our contact numbers, but I'd like for everyone to kind of say a little bit about their organization a little bit more and a little bit more about the services that could help in uh, dealing with isolation and, and loneliness. So um, Sue, are you back with us? Mm, <laughs> I don't think so, okay. And I wanna mention in this context that the, the Cooley Dixon, Dickinson VNA and hospice is also an entity, but the Valley Neighbors and others have worked with. And it's also a resource for um, getting assistance um, that people often don't think of, but they're there and they work in Franklin County as well. So um, how about Linda, do you wanna go ahead and talk a little bit more about uh, Life Path? Sure, um, I would recommend people who can to go to our website so they could look at the many mm -hmm. programs that we provide. Um, uh, but I'd like to talk particularly about a few that, uh, well, one in particular that we started uh, because of COVID back in April. Um, so many people in the community started calling up, how can I help? How can I volunteer? And, you know, we have a grocery shopping program, um, you know, that people would say that they would be willing to help. And then we started a phone pal program because we figure, well, people can't get together physically, but um, so we put that program together mm -hmm. and put a training together for volunteers who say, you know, I'd love to call somebody. And um, for our staff at Life Path, we mentioned, you know, here's a program. If you think you have a client who would like something like this and talk to somebody on a regular basis, let us know. And I think right now we have like 15 people, um, 15 volunteers, and maybe about 17 people, because some people are calling up two clients. And, you know, that's something we'd like to expand. So, you know, if you yourself feel like you would like a phone pal, you can call us and ask to talk to somebody in that program. Um, 
And if you want to be a volunteer and say, you know, I'd like to call somebody um, and, you know, on a regular basis. And most people are talking to people once a week, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. We provide support for, vo for the volunteers. We have Zoom meetings um, on a regular basis, what's working, what's not working. So there's a lot of support there. Um, also, because I do dementia coaching, this is a hard time for caregivers, particularly if they're taking care of someone with cognitive impairment. Mm -hmm. And we can provide some dementia coaching if, if people say, I don't know what to do. Um, you know, there are certain behaviors I'm having a hard time with, um, activities I don't know what to do. Um, you know, uh, we're happy. There's three of us who do dementia coaching at our agency. So people can call and say, I'd like that dementia coaching. And we could do that via the telephone or if people have the ability for um, a virtual meeting with the caregiver, we can do that. Um, and then um, also from all of this, we also started a virtual caregiver support group. So we have a dementia caregiver support group. We actually have two at the agency. Um, I run a group and it meets every Thursday from 10 to 11 in the morning. And um, people just need to give me a call. They can call Life Path and ask for um, Linda Puzan. And I can give them information about the group and, and get them hooked up. Um, I have a colleague, Molly Chambers, who also um, runs um, a virtual support group. She does hers in the evenings. It's on the first and um, third Wednesday every month from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. So if nighttime works better for some caregivers, there's that opportunity. The nice thing about doing it virtually, because a lot, and because part of the problem now too, adult day centers aren't open. So people can't, even if they, you know, they can't, they can't leave their loved ones anyway. So having a mm -hmm. virtual meeting can be very helpful. Mm. So they're in the home um, and they don't have to worry about, they can still monitor the person that they're caring for. Mm. And I also have a mental health outreach program. I shouldn't say I, Life Path does. It's <laughs> called the Elder Mental Health Outreach Program. Mm. And if people feel, they just say, you know, I'm having a hard time. I'm feeling depressed. I'm feeling anxious. I, I just don't know what to do. Um, I don't want to do therapy. Because a lot of people think of that. I don't want to do a counseling, but I want to talk to somebody. This is a good program for them to call in and say, here's what I'm dealing with. And we will get back to the person and we will troubleshoot with them, um, set up goals. What are you dealing with? And try to help them out. And if some people do need counseling, we'll try to connect them if that is something that they want. But we can provide an array of services through that program as well. Particularly now, winter, Sometimes, you know, people, and I, I can understand this, people get very anxious. My fuel assistants, I'm, I'm, I, I can't deal with this. I, I don't know what to do. And, you know, our program could say, all right, it sounds like you're dealing with a lot of things now. Let's see what we can do to help you. And who can we connect you with at our agency in our benefits counseling yeah. program? Mm -hmm. So um, those are some of the things that we're trying to do to um, help people deal with um, what's going on right now with COVID. And, you know, we're still brainstorming some new ideas too. What else do we want to do? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I'm hoping after COVID that our phone pal program will continue. Um, it, I call it going back to the future because, <laughs> you know, back in the 60s and 70s, mm -hmm. phone pals started to yeah. come of age, right? Friendly visitors, those Yes. Yeah, so, you know, we're, we're starting it again and it's really a wonderful way for people to get to know each other, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and start to build rapport and, you know, a lot of, and we try to match people up the best we can to say, we think these two people would, um, you know, like to talk to each other. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. Um, I see Sue and Nancy are back on, with us. Um, Sue, do you want to take a minute and tell us a little bit more about the care collaboratives efforts and, and resources that people can take advantage of. Uh, right now, the shop just thought we're just open. Three days a week. I think uh, uh, a kind of unintended um, offer that we have or the way that we've been helpful is that 
because of COVID, people have been home and had an opportunity to sort through and find what they <laughs> and um, also it's it's really kind of a watering hole it's a place for people to come and t traditionally we've had chairs we've had a place for kids to play uh, that was our intention when we created the shop and now we aren't really encouraging that uh, but I, I know I, I can It's too bad. Um, we're having a little technical problem hearing you, Nancy and uh, Sue. Um, can you hear us? Anyway, that I just wanted to say that uh, um, the Cla Care Collaborative and uh, the Giving Circle Thrift Store is located right in downtown South Deerfield. So it's, and they are open with limited hours, I understand. But again, there's a little bit of the watering hole sense of people can go safely in and, and get things, I believe, and um, everything from clothing, dishes, playthings, et cetera. Um, I, I, Sue's um, telephone number is right here. So if people want to call the Care Collective or the Giving Circle Thrift Store before they head out, um, please do. Here's the number. Um, I, I'd like to turn to Christina, whose senior center has been sort of closed, but with all the outreach efforts and um, ongoing uh, things that Christina and, and her staff have been doing, people are at least getting some assistance. Maybe not all they'd like, but uh, Christina, can you fill us in on uh, the resources you have available now? Yes, um, mm -hmm. certainly. Um, first of all, um, we do serve um, lunch five days a week, Monday through Friday. Mm -hmm. um, so for anyone that's interested in getting um, the, the food actually comes from Life Path, um, but you know we serve it with a bag um, with breakfast from um, the high school. So you're actually getting a lunch and a breakfast. So, and we just ask for a three dollar donation to go towards Life Path. But if that's something anyone's interested in, um, certainly give me a call um, at the center, um, and you could sign up for meals. Um, and and it's kind of, it works like a drive through. So um, unfortunately, as as Fran said, the the building itself is not open to people, but. Mm -hmm. um, we still do a lot of things through drive through. <laughs> um, uh, we also, ha we have food, we have on um, farm stands on wet farm stand on Wednesday. Um, so tomorrow, um, another opportunity to get access to food. And every third Wednesday, we have the Turner's Falls mobile food bank comes and provides um, a lot, a lot of goodies. So another opportunity um, for food. Um, and then of course, you know, we're fully staffed and have been since this started. Um, so you can, you know, what the, the other thing we can help with, I'll be, you know, over the phone or we were meeting people outside, but that's obviously getting harder and harder. <laughs> uh, believe me, uh, I know from standing outside serving the lunches, you can only <laughs> you start to freeze pretty fast. But um, we do provide you know assistance if you need help with fuel assistance or SNAP benefits or I mean anything that you might need assistance with. Um, you can you know still call. We are still here. Um, and then lastly, I really, I really want to stress that even if it, you're, you don't have, you know, even if you just want to talk to somebody, um, we are here for that. Give us a call. Um, we, you know, we are happy to, you know, chat with us, or if you would like, if you prefer email, send us an email, um, you know, 
anyone can certainly check in at any time and um, myself and my staff are, are very receptive to that. So um, again, the building is closed, but um, the staff and the senior center itself is still running as best we can. We With just unfortunately hearts. can't hold programming. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, I can attest to that. With open hearts, they're doing everything they can with for food and everything that's possible to do safely at the moment. I just wanted to add a few things about the Valley Neighbors. We we are, as I mentioned at the beginning, we're sort of a, a new uh, group of volunteers from the three towns, uh, Waitley, Deerfield, and Sunderland. And um, we, we plan to offer services, but given the COVID situation, we were unable to provide them directly now, those that we uh, have helped a little bit with the, with Christina and the Senior Center, and we plan to engage in that way in the interim until it's safer to provide transportation directly. I mean, we're able to do pickups and that kind of stuff and phone um, check-ins and things like that. But um, I just wanted to add that there'll be more in 2021, but, I'm so glad because um, all of us together are partners, some of us uh, formally in a, in a way on, uh, on some grants, uh, the Valley Neighbors, South County and uh, Life Path. And, you know, <laughs> by, uh, by um, proximity, the CARE Collaborative, um, we're all working together to try to find the best ways we can help our residents. Um, and, or, you know, even, so it's maybe in virtual realms, we some a lot of it's still possible to do by drive-throughs or pickups and that, and that's why we wanted to talk about um, this, the problems of isolation and loneliness in this context of COVID-19 today, because help is still there, even though it may be a little more virtual than we have hoped. Um, so I'd like to open it up now for questions. I know we have uh, Liz here. I don't know if you have any questions, Liz, but. Um, uh, no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm good, thanks. Um, okay. I think I know everybody here, but um, just yeah. for point of reference, um, I'm on the uh, Sunderland Council on Aging and participating with that, uh, trying to get that up and running and off the ground and also available at some point to help as soon as people have all of our contact information. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm really thrilled and pleased to be driving the meals um, a couple of days a week. Mm -hmm. And it does really uh, give you um, an understanding of how they brighten up when you walk in. It's just, it's, I think that they appreciate that so much that of course is repeated over and over by the formal home delivers me home delivered meals program from life Pass. So those are mm -hmm. enormous um, assets to our communities, but Mm -hmm. And kudos to everyone on the panel because everybody is working really, really hard on behalf of our community. And uh, it's really touching and wonderful to see. Good job, everybody. Thanks, yeah. thanks. Yeah. And mm -hmm. thank you, Liz, because as Liz mentioned, she, she is one of our volunteers that drive some of our meals to the people that can't get here, you know, mm -hmm. that don't have transportation or can't drive. Um, and she and, and she's one of our uh, wonderful volunteers that brings some of our meals um, out to those people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Does anyone else want to say something, uh, last words, and uh, provide some more uh, inspiring <laughs> assistance? Or are we good? I guess I, I, I just want to say, I just want to make sure, you know, that when mm -hmm. people see this, that it's to really encourage them to call any of us mm -hmm. that are listed that's here. Right. You know, mm -hmm. that that's just really important. We will work, we'll do our best to brainstorm and help the best way we can. So to not hesitate to give a call. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. You have the telephone numbers, the contact numbers, and we will reach out as needed and share our resources is needed to help um, anybody in the three uh, towns uh, 
but also beyond that if you know if needed so um thank you everybody i think this will bring to an end this webinar and i appreciate everyone's participation and i look forward to doing something similar again in the future <laughs>